Hi guys, welcome to another video. This time I'm going to show you my Zeiss Super Econta C 6x9 folding camera. Originally I bought this camera for a project that I was shooting in the town where my dad lived. It was like a suburban town near Düsseldorf and I also lived there for about two years of my life when I finished school, so many, many years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm older than I look. So I lived there for about two years. Didn't explore it much because I didn't really like living there particularly. It was a very suburban, boring kind of place. And the sort of social life that uh, was common there was very strange to me because I originally grew up in a different area of Germany. And in this particular area they had carnival and uh, gun festivals and that sort of stuff. And it, it kind of freaked me out for a while. So after I moved away, I, I actually moved abroad, I actually happened to come back to that place way more often than I wanted to because my dad lived there and I always came to visit him and he uh, kind of didn't want to move. So <laughs> I had to spend more time in this place than I really wanted. But I also thought that there was a photographic project there somehow and I wanted to explore this a bit further, especially since, it, you know, national identity and German identity can be a bit weird. And I'm not really German, I'm, I'm only half German. And yeah, I, I was exploring that. So I started this project on my Leica originally, in, in a sort of um, street photography on carnival type way. And I've been shooting carnivals for quite a few years now. I find them weird and fascinating, obnoxious too, but weird and fascinating and yeah, kind of, it needs earplugs basically. <laughs> and then I wanted to combine it with pictures from this suburban place where my dad lived because I, I saw some parallels there. I think, yeah, you can probably appreciate it in the examples that I'm showing here. Well, I don't really want to make a video again about this project because I already made one and if you want to see more of this project and hear a bit more about the background, then you can watch this video here. And now I'm gonna come to the actual point of this video, the camera that I bought. I started this project on the Leica, but later on I thought I wanted to have also a format where I could print a bit bigger, and that suggested medium format. At the time I couldn't really afford any of the Fuji 6x9 cameras and I can afford them even less now <laughs> because they've gone up quite a lot in price. And so I looked for the typical cheapest option in medium format which is old folding cameras. Most of them are quite old now which can be a problem with the bellows that they have. Since they fold up they, they usually have bellows. Most of them in quite bad shape after a long time. This particular camera was from 1937 and I thought it actually added a lot to the conceptual side of the project too because, well, if it's about something German, national identity and so on, then 1937 fits the ticket, doesn't it? And I also was convinced that Zeiss would be a really good option and fit well with the Leica because Zeiss makes really high quality lenses too and my main lens for the Leica was also a Zeiss lens so there was a sort of connection there too. Now this camera arrived to me in a mm, bit of a questionable state maybe. It was in relatively good shape generally speaking but the rangefinder was misaligned and there's also a light leak on it which is kind of to be expected after so many years I mean, an 80-year-old bellows, yeah, it, it develops holes after such a long time. It makes sense. So I first aligned the rangefinder, which wasn't too hard. I tried to do it with a ground glass, but I couldn't quite do that. It just wasn't really line, lining up. And then, yeah, I, in the end, I just taped the tape measure to the floor of my studio and developed the roll. 
and that worked in the end. And now I have it calibrated so that the close focus is relatively accurate. You can't really have it set up so that the close focus and infinity are both lined up, it's because of the way the, this particular rangefinder works. So I decided to go with a closer focus because that's more commonly my use. Now after that I tried to fix the light leak with different methods, taping the camera here and there, but I just couldn't find where that light leak was. I kept trying and kept trying, but without real success. In the end, the light leak wasn't that big anyway, it was a rather small one. So I decided to put up with it, and it's just a minor thing, and I could usually crop it out, it wasn't a real big problem. And I finished the project without it becoming a real issue. But well, when you're a bit, you know, bored in lockdown, perhaps, what better thing to spend your time with than by hunting light leaks. And that's <laughs> what I did. I tried to find it with a flashlight that I got recently. It's a sort of red flashlight that you could probably also use in the darkroom. I haven't tried it yet. It should probably be safe if you don't point it at the paper directly. It's very strong, so I thought I would have better luck trying to find the light leak. And I actually found a pinhole that could have been responsible and taped that up with a bit of tape that is called, I think, wire harnessing tape or something like that. It's something they use in automotive wiring, basically. It's light tight and it's flexible, so it's a good thing to use. The adhesive is also relatively strong, so it's, it's very good for the application. So after I taped it up, I took the camera to a trail that is near here. You've probably seen this trail quite a few times already on this channel. It's one of my favorite spots in the area and it's part of the Camino de Santiago. It's very beautiful, very picturesque and the landscapes there are fantastic. So it's a really nice place to take pictures. But let's just get into the point of view footage and you'll see for yourself. Dilek. What? That noise. That noise. Thank you for waiting. No problem. <laughs> no problem. They do look a bit alien. Also, watch where I'm step. stepping. <laughs> I think that 
when it make a nice picture. That's yeah. water. people are happy. All my friends. Hmm? I'm with all my tree friends. <laughs> and I wonder what lives in there. I want to know. Well, I'm not going to have a too detailed look. <laughs> Scurried away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like us when we see people without masks. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, this is very steep. Yes, I have to look at what you have for your stepping. The water is. You can see the water is really good. I hope I'm not wrong. <laughs> I think so. I, I want to take a picture, the last one. From here? Yes. So this was 
hour hike on the trail here and I took quite a few nice pictures I thought. This camera lends itself to a rather slow way of working. It's not the most straightforward to use. You always have to make sure to do everything in the right order and not to forget to wind forward and the typical thing that you have to worry about with folding cameras. The light leak was of course not fixed. I mean, what was I expecting after <laughs> trying to find that light leak for years, really? Uh, still not found. Maybe one day I'll locate it. Maybe not. And I could just replace the bellows of this thing. But uh, first of all, I like the original bellows. I could probably not make such nice bellows again. They're leather and the cloth bellows that you can get now are not quite as nice. And the main problem is that you would have to drill into the camera body to attach the bellows and I'm not really prepared to do that. I'm a bit scared of, you know, taking a drill to my camera. Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. But yeah, more or less, it's in quite good shape. It takes great pictures. The lens is quite amazing. It has this sort of vintage, low contrast style and it's really nice that way. It's of course not a multi-coated lens from 1937. I think there might be versions that have multi-coating, but not this particular one. Yeah, generally these cameras, if you want a folding camera with really nice lenses, size is a really good option. It has a 105mm normal lens, an aperture of 4.5 as the widest aperture. That doesn't seem like a very shallow depth of field, but because of the format it's actually still quite substantial and you do get bokeh with this one. I kind of like it for street photography too because it opens people up. It's, it's such an unusual camera, they don't feel as threatened as they would be with a camera that is newer and looks like maybe a DSLR or something like that. If you point big lenses at people, it kind of freaks them out sometimes. And with this one you don't have that effect. You have more of a curiosity effect. What kind of camera is that? And people might ask you questions about it and that's always a good way of breaking the ice. And this is also one of the reasons why I like shooting my Rolai cord and why it's my second used camera, because it's also one of those cameras where people get very interested in talking to you about the camera and don't feel as threatened. What also really surprised me was that this camera actually does really well with color film. And obviously that's surprising because at the time nobody used color film. So it was basically designed for black and white, but it does really well with color too. And I've shot a lot of Fuji Pro 400H in it, which uh, was sadly discontinued now. And that was my favorite film. And Mm. Yeah, so it had a good run with my favorite film and I shot this project on it and the project worked out really well. I really liked the colors of it. The project also turned out exactly like I had imagined it, so I'm very happy with the results that I got from it. And well, I also thought that this role that I shot in the mountains here was also quite nice. I'm always happy with the results I'm getting from this camera. Now, if you're considering getting a camera like this and it's by now also out of your price range, then you can also look into the Soviet alternative of this one, which is a Moskva. At the end of the Second World War, the Russians dismantled a lot of camera manufacturing equipment in Germany and took it back to Russia and then made copies of all the German cameras that were really famous at the time. And that means that the earlier cameras that you can get from right after the war, the Moskvas and the Zorkis and Feds and Kievs, all these different Soviet cameras are actually copies of German cameras. And the quality control was obviously not as good as the German one. I think Soviet cameras are kind of uh, known and have a reputation for being a bit shoddy at times because the quality control wasn't really up to speed always. But if you get a good copy, they can be quite good too. And if you want a size 
Super Contest C, one of the 6.9 ones, then I think the Moskva would be a good option, I think. They also made some improvements on the design as time went on, and they can be quite good cameras, and I've seen some very good results from them too. I don't have one, I only have this original one, but I've seen many people take interesting pictures with the Moskvas too, and the handling will be pretty much the same. These old folding cameras can take very nice pictures, it's obviously the glass that makes the difference in the image quality, but the handling is generally not as comfortable as with newer film cameras. You probably won't find much of a difference between the Soviet copy and the original in the early versions of the copies. Later on they changed the designs a bit and improved them, but also quality control kind of became worse, so you kind of have to weigh your options there. This is actually my oldest camera and I quite like using it. It's, it's a nice one. I enjoy it and I can recommend it, but of course folding cameras are not for everyone. But it is a rather cheap option of getting into medium format normally. If you don't have a medium format camera already, then a folding camera can be a really good way of getting into it. They're also very light, which helps if you use it when traveling. They tend to be interesting looking, so it's nice in that way too. And if you don't like it, they make very excellent shelf ornaments too. <laughs> so you can only win by getting a folding camera like this one. It doesn't have to be the high-end size original. You can get a Soviet copy or one of the cheaper options too. They're all interesting cameras and this is actually how I got into medium format too. Many folding cameras will only have zone focusing though and finding one with a rangefinder at an acceptable price can be difficult, especially since not all of them are in great shape nowadays. Anyway, I think this series of point of view videos has sort of um, turned into a series of showing you all my different cameras. Traveling and shooting lots of street photography is kind of difficult now. And going to the woods with one of my cameras from my collection is always nice and I can take you along for the ride and show you the different cameras that I have. Eventually I will of course run out of cameras because I'm not that bad of a hoarder. That's not the truth. I'm a really bad hoarder <laughs> but I just have self-restraint when buying cameras and I don't have millions of them yet. I, I, I don't even know how many I have. I, they, they are everywhere. Okay, okay, I take it back. I'm a relentless hoarder and I have many cameras and it's gonna take me a while until you've seen all of them. So <laughs> if you're into that sort of thing, you can subscribe if you want. <laughs> there are gonna be quite a few of these videos, I think. And by the time I'm through with all of them, I might have gotten a new one. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. You can also support my channel on Ko-fi if you like what I do here. And all of this, the liking, the subscribing, the commenting, and the support on Ko-fi, they all help to keep this channel running. So I really appreciate it always. In the future, you can expect more videos like this one. I actually have quite a few of these videos pre-filmed, but it's been sort of difficult with uh, constant construction noise and neighbors having arguments, like in this video. I don't know whether you heard this, but yeah, they were having a bit of a go at each other. Uh, yeah, it, it makes filming uh, quite challenging at times. Lately, the construction noise hasn't been too bad. I think there are some construction material shortages going on right now, which gives me every now and then a little breather to record one of these videos, and I will keep trying that. So I hope I see you soon for another video. Bye! Well, that was stupid. <laughs> Someone commented that my eyebrows are the best thing about these videos. Not sure what to think about this. 
I guess Spock has something to say about this. Let's get the show on the road. Hi guys, welcome to another video. This time I'm going to show you my Zeiss Super Econta C, I think. Well, that didn't quite work. <laughs> Cardful in. 